What is the connection between these aspects of the covenant with Abraham, Sarah, and Moses, and the liberation from Egypt and the Ten Commandments with the original purposes of God? And how does this fit into our lives today? Remember the great vision of God that began the whole Christian narrative, the vision of life together. We're made for that life together with God, with one another, with the whole of creation. The covenant with Israel in its early phases shows us how this vision collides with reality. In the great story of the Exodus, we see that in order for Israel to be free for each other and for God to live in the land of milk and honey with the whole created order, it first has to be liberated from bondage. And so too we have to be liberated, to be freed from sin and evil and death in order to be free for God and the world. That means that liberation and reconciliation go together. This same sense of reality that's part and parcel of the Old Testament, the realism about the bondage in which we all live, is underscored for us again in the Ten Commandments. Notice the refrain, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. The commandments assume the persistence of our rebellion against the purposes of God. And so we hear, you shall have no other gods before you. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Biblical faith has no illusions about the slavery that is pervasive in our experience, our bondage to our self-serving forgetfulness of God. Why is this part of the Bible so important for Christians as well as for an ancient people, indeed up to today's very Judaism. It's because we've been given a vision of liberation and reconciliation in the great story of Exodus. We get a picture of that vision once again, the one we lost in order to clarify it, in order to look at it with all of its power and reality. And again, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, brings the vision together with the reality and spells out the different dimensions of it. The first table of the Ten Commandments expresses the love of God, reminding us how we resist that love, how we make our idols, how we worship other gods. And it shows us the purpose of God for life together on this planet and the rules of the game, that we should not do the things are spelled out with clarity. And below the vision and the realities and the mandates, there is the original covenant with Abraham, telling us as Christians what faithfulness means, that there's a grace given. The response God expects from us to that grace is trust and faith. And out of that faith comes works of love and righteousness and justice. And as we'll see later, St. Paul refers back to Abraham as the very father of faith, as the model for what faith in Jesus Christ is.